that up on the fly <laughs> i couldn't tell at all no <laughs> i will get ruby disappoint you just and dubstep just you you just i could just do that just awkwardly leave you the could. camera i could just leave the camera awkwardly could. on you you could and i would sit here and be like uh and then it would get boring all right launch is only a few weeks away Arena Nita giving us a little bit of news, and we've got tons of viewer questions, but first, yada, yada, yada. All right, let's go. Um, hi, Scott. Hi. How are you? Fantastic. Good. You're freaking me out now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know either. This is like... Ninja start. Seriously. See, Richie's oh. the only one that went with it. He, he was just like, all right, I'm going for this. I'm going to wave to everybody. All right. <laughs> all right. So just a few hours ago, uh, Ruby, 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 disappoint Ruby posted up on the Guild Wars 2 Facebook page that they are actually having another uh, stress test. Uh, and my producer, uh, Dom, proceeded to put the link in the show notes and just write zzzz. I think he's growing tired of the stress test. What are you guys thinking? I mean, I think it's almost like a tease. He's like, I want to play and I don't want more stress tests. Stop teasing me. But they must have stuff that they have to fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd rather deal with stress tests that aren't the real thing and have a very smooth launch is what I'm hoping for. So it's, it's an okay trade-off. Any other details uh, come out besides just the fact that they're stress testing? Not really much, right? Uh, rumor is we get to keep our characters, which is good. I would have been really unhappy otherwise. So at least there's that. Yeah, it's confirmed. We got the. Yeah. It's, good. it's confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Good. It is confirmed. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, they said uh, we will be conducting a stress test on Thursday, August 9th, from 12 noon Pacific to 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, the stress test is open to anyone who has pre purchased Guild Wars 2. Uh, we will be actively working on the game during the event, so you might experience connectivity problems, yada, yada, yada. It's almost the same message as last time, so get ready for incoming patches, live connectivity problems, all that kind of stuff. Seems like a lot of the same, uh, you know, sort of verbiage there that we saw last time. So mark your calendars, get your hot pockets. You got another four hours, you know. You got four hours to play with your Guardian. I, yeah, okay, I played the Guardian again. <laughs> no, I, had to, I was like, I need to be sure the Silvari Guardian is, is what I'm going for. So I, I, I made Silvari Guardian. A lot of people, lot, one, thing, one thing that's like a lot of, I see a lot over and over and over are the people who are just a little bit frustrated that they can't play because it's like in the middle of the work day. It's like 12 to 4. <laughs> But I mean, when, when else are they going to do it, right? They, they're not going to stay all night. I mean, they're probably working really late, but I would imagine yeah, most, no. most of the staff probably has to go home. Well, I, I would, people in Europe are like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, yes, finally. Yeah, I, I would imagine that they know that they're about to work lots and lots of like 24 hour days. So, you know, let's make the stress tests at least during their business hours so they can at least have some semblance of, of, of life before launch. So I think yeah. that's why they're doing that. What about on the last stress test, Rich? How many? How many? How much time did you put in? Uh, I put about I, about three hours in out of the four. Um, I uh, I got some footage for some videos for my YouTube channel. But I, the, one of the things that uh, I thought I think is a good tip for anybody wondering what to do with a, such a small test is uh, use use that time in the character creator 
figure out what exactly you want your character to look like and then take screenshots of it so that, you know, because I don't know if anybody's like me, but I take forever in character creators. And if you just want to get going and going on, on launch day, you know, hit the ground running, spend the time now during these stress tests. It's perfect because it's, it's such a small window of time to play. Is that really is that really what you guys do? Really? You sit there and make screenshots of all your choices? I did. Wow. I took a screenshot of characters after I like made them so that I, I knew what I wanted. But I, I might change them. I'm very, like, I might be on launch and be like, no, that looks like crap. That's not my character at all. So uh, I spent most of my time doing jumping puzzles because I like jumping puzzles a lot. Are jumping puzzles uh, faring pretty well with most of the, the, the community? They seem to be, and they've been pretty active. I don't think I've ever run through one and not seen someone at some point, especially on the longer ones. There's always someone who's, like, running back because they messed up somewhere down the line. Um, the somebody last. Laying, uh, sorry, somebody laying down an IOE um, yeah. haste buff, and you go, ah! And pull it <laughs> yes. <off> the <laughs> last, always fun. The last stress test, Scott, was the only, uh, was like one of the first times I actually started seeing people say that there were some issues and they were running into technical issues, which is to expect, hence Ruby's post. But uh, did you run into any issues uh, on the last stress test? Oh, yes. What, did, what, um, were, what were you first saying? First of all, well, I couldn't, logging in was an issue, and I finally got in, and then I was stuck at character select, and it wouldn't let me hit play, grade it out. I was like, that's not right. So I sat and waited patiently, twiddling my thumbs and, you know, looking up in the air, and then I said, I've had enough of this, and I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't window and close it, I couldn't, I even tried task manager to get rid of it. Couldn't do it. It was like, Guild Wars 2 is like, I'm not going anywhere, I'm staying <laughs> tough. So uh, I had to hard boot. I had to do it like three or four times. So I had to leave it a little while. But eventually, um, about, I, I only got about two and a bit hours in. Uh, when I got in there, finally, it was fine after that. How about anybody else? Richie, you run into any issues? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of people did. It, it went up and down. They patched sometimes. Uh, you know, I got I had the same thing. Scott, I couldn't log in for certain times. But you know, again, uh, I'm just thinking in my head, this is good. Let's get this out now. Let's let's test these systems. This, the ability to like update on the fly. I, and yeah, you know, let's get all of these uh, systems uh, tested before before launch. I actually had quite a bit of trouble in the very in the very last beta weekends. I had a whole I had a whole the whole Friday night I couldn't get in at all. I actually had to use hmm. a repair tool to get in. So I actually started having issues in that beta weekend. Um, but I had, I had a frames per second. Is, I had some frames per second issues in the last beta event, but this the stress test was pretty. I, di I didn't get in for like the first hour, almost two hours. Only got about two hours in. And did you guys notice most of the issues in the first two hours or the latter? Because yeah. I okay yeah. okay because I, I didn't hours, I didn't yeah. even yeah okay so I only got the last two hours in and I was like when I logged in it was boom right in no problems I didn't I think it was like a patch or two but that was to be expected but I didn't see anything mm -hmm. anything weird. So someone mentioned in chat. This so they need to set auto detect on the graphic settings. And they're out with me as well. I logged in. I was like, "What's happened? It all looks crap." Yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh, and I went into graphic settings, and they, they were all over the place. So I just hit auto detect. And it's like that's better. It looks yeah. like the game. Yes. Over there. So what? Uh, so yeah, quite a few people have that. So with with with, how long do we have left now? What is it, like sixteen days? Yep. Do you think? Yep. Do you guys think this will be really the last stress test? Do you think this will be it? You think there's gonna be another one? I think there's gonna be another one after this. Well, There'll be another one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why why not why not just keep doing this once a week, a four hour window up until launch? You know, they're obviously still changing things. They're going to be tweaking things right up till the end. Uh, you know, let's keep keep testing it. This is a great tool for them to do. Then we know they're not going to have any more beta weekend events. So I wouldn't be surprised if we if we have one one a week like this. Um, up until launch we need to mm -hmm. uh we all need to powwow and get together and figure out what we're doing for a launch day we have to be doing a launch mm -hmm. event like we have to do a midnight release party gameplay stream the whole nine so i don't know what we got to do but the three of us we got to interact we're gonna together. do it launch day we're gonna do it head start are we gonna we do both. i don't know, I don't know. it's all confusing who knows let's do both i don't know crazy I'm hey, it's right. a big event, man. This is this is one of the Dream. biggest. I mean, you know, this is one of the biggest ones we've got ever. I mean, we've done some, you know, StarCraft launches. We did Cataclysm launch, but this is a big one, man. A lot of people are excited. Let's do this. I don't know. Let's get on it, Scott. Yes, it's your job. It's my job. <laughs> okay. All right. So also this week, um, anybody else do anything interesting about the last stress test? Like I'm just kind of like meandering around doing some PVP, like not really, like, I don't feel like four hours is enough time to really like dig in and kind of like do any kind of 
specific stuff for the show or anything. And I'm just kind of like going in there. I tried the new map and, you know, did some PvP. And I was like, right, I'm done. Yeah. Is everybody pretty lax at this point with, with the gameplay? Yeah, that's why, like why I said, why I got stuck in the character creator. I'm like, I don't want to get involved in anything, really. You know, I, I, and at this point, a lot of people have been playing since the very first beta weekend. You know, we're kind of saturated. We're kind of enough of beta at this point. We want it to count. So, yeah, it's 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 hard to actually get super motivated for these stress tests if you've had a lot of time to play before. That's at least how I'm approaching it. Sky, you better uh, make sure that they don't uh, nerf Guardians. Better. Can you stop it? Just you know, just start bring giving them ideas all the time, and I keep telling people when they, they talk about you know, can Guardians DPS as well is like you know cover the ground they want to and controlling PVP, people voting eighty odd percent that you need to have a Guardian. Shh. Nerf Guardians. All right. So also this week. Um, GameTrailers.com spoke with ArenaNet's Mike Z about the Fields of Ruin. Uh, before we get into this, um, I'm assuming the Fields of Ruin are a good place to go on vacation in Guild Wars 2. Maybe kind of pull up a nice chair. Steeply discounted hotels. There is that. Nice. Is it hurricane season? <laughs> no. It's an <laughs> antique paradise. Yes, it is that. So what do we know about the Fields of Ruin? What, uh, yeah, we... <laughs> it's, it's like, the, there's, there's a ton of lore in the background of it, and, um, it's related to Ebonhawk, and then I'm going to look at Elizabeth, because she... No, um, I feel like this is going to be one of the places where there's a lot of lore discovery in-game, because, um, a lot of what happened in Fields of Ruin is what's going on in the 250-year gap between Guild Wars and Guild Wars 2. Ah. So this is one of the places where you'll really be able to walk in and hear NPC chatter that's really informing you about the stuff, the kind of stage that's been set for your actions. And, you know, look around and see things that you don't necessarily recognize so much from Guild Wars 1, but are very relevant and have kind of been going on and, and developing in the last century or so. And we covered this uh, news hit on GameRaker uh, during the week. There was uh, Jason Winter noticed something. There was, some, there was some talk about that's almost sounded like it alluded to possible like quest chains having multiple uh, branches uh, in 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 story stuff. Do you guys do you guys know anything about that? Like, did we know that personal story would branch? Because we know that. But yeah, there were some yeah. specifics. No, there were some specifics with the area though. Um, not that I was aware of. All right, good job, team. Go team. I'm probably just pulling stuff <laughs> out of my butt. I'm probably just pulling. Well, stuff. no, it's um, it's one of the places that your personal story will lead you to, and mm -hmm. you can make choices there that will change from someone else making a different choice. So basically, needless to say, Guild Wars One peeps are very happy that this exists. Yes. Anybody who's really into the lore or is a very a big fan of the novels, you know, because this area is mentioned a, bu a bunch of the novels and stuff like that. So it's not necessarily nostalgic for Guild Wars 1 players because they didn't really get to play in this area. But anyone who really loves the lore of Guild Wars 1, you know, read the novels and then is excited to see how things have changed into Guild Wars 2, they're going to be hugely popular area for those type of people. So the fortress. Go ahead. He actually mentioned that my favorite side character from one of the novels, Ember Doomforge, is going to make an appearance, which made me really excited. <laughs> now, this, tell me, does anybody know anything a little bit more about the story behind this fortress? The fortress has been under siege for like 250 years, right? I mean, what, what's, what's yeah. going on here? What's the deal? Why such long, uh, long-standing hate? Uh, so the Char and humans have actually been warring pretty much since within 200 years of humans arriving on the planet, um, because the humans pushed the Char with the help of the gods out of Ascalon, um, which the Char are kind of resentful about. Um, so after the Faux Fire, when pretty much um, the humans were wiped out, Ebonhawk was the last standing human settlement in, a in the Ascalonian territory. It was founded um, by King Alburn. He sent... Um, as a fortified city, that is. Um, he sent Gwen and Karen Thackeray um, and other members of the Evan Vanguard up there to fortify it, control it, and like defend trade lines and keep um, keep humans alive in Ascalon. And then the Faux Fire happened, and they're kind of the last bastion of humanity in that area. So they feel very strongly about it because humans identify Ascalon as their kind of homelands, even though they stole it from the Char, who also see it as their homelands. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of tension there. So uh, a little bit of tension in this area. It sounds like, and I guess, I guess, I guess, like what were you saying with a lot of the chatter? I guess we can almost expect probably a lot of anti-Char and anti-human chatter while walking through this area. 
Yeah, for sure. You, you're going to have, you know, obviously the the, 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 the the theme of Guild Wars 2 is all the races have to start working together towards this bigger threat, but there's still going to be factions of humans that can't stand the char. There's going to be char that can't stand humans, and they're going to want to incite war. They don't like all this peace talk, and so that's definitely going to be uh, a big theme in this area, and I, and I think that's going to be very interesting for people because, you know, in Guild Wars 1, people played, you know, anti-char for, that, for, for, for most of, of that span. And, and uh, you know, there's going to be people that want to continue to to hate that or actually take the other side of it in Guild Wars 2. So it's going to be very interesting to see this area. How massive? Be, you, oh, Scott. Sorry, there's going to be the, the human uh, stories. Certainly going to have lots of, like, uh, big stuff happening around there with the Thackeray family, um, shall we say. I don't want to spoil too much, actually. Cause, <laughs> but a lot of stuff happens in Edge of Destiny around that area very specifically that will tie into Logan Thackeray's story and that will tie into what's going on um, as you, I'm sure, go along and, you know, reunite the gang and everything. So, yes. Um, now, looking at some of the some of the stuff that they actually showed here, like, the, how big is this fortress? Can we really tell? We don't have, like, a full-on massive city, right? But it looks like there's a lot of other, like, smaller settlements around and things like that, um, which a lot of their smaller settlements kind of put other MMOs to shame almost, don't they? Yep. They're, they're all a bit big, aren't they? There's, there's no sort of like, right, we've got a settlement on the outskirts. Let's just throw up a hut and have a few <laughs> people standing around a campfire. That'll do. That you might see in the odd other MMO. This is like, right, we've got a settlement. Sure, a couple of thousand people could fit in this. That, that <laughs> settlement, that's what that means, doesn't it? It, it seems like the, the, they have a real thing where the, the, from Texas or something like that. It's much bigger everywhere. What level is this area? Do we know about what level you're going to be when you get here? About 30. It's about 30? Yeah. 30, I, I know it's... The I other... I, I think it's 30 to 40, I think. <laughs> that sounds right. The other branded zone we've seen was, um, I believe, 40, 45 to 55 or so. So this is just on the lower end of that. Or 40 to 50 years. Later. Exciting, exciting stuff. Can't wait. All right. Let's... Uh, digital Gaudium. I guess there's a website here. I don't know these guys. Do you know Digital Gaudium? Anybody? Gaudium? What is it? Gaudium. Gaudium? I'm completely making that up. The Gaudium <laughs> from, from Massachusetts. The Gaudium. 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 The player Gaudium. Uh, they spoke with ArenaNet about apps. Yes, the apps, which we've been we're wondering about a few weeks ago, saying, hey, what happened to those? They sounded great when you guys talked about them, and then we didn't hear about them forever, so... Stop talking. Uh, here's the word. So they said, for launch, we won't have any Guild Wars 2 apps available for use for players. Uh, however, soon after launch, we'll be launching a robust app development program in conjunction with our community that should allow for the development of some truly spectacular Guild Wars 2 app and website development. Uh, we'll discuss this more post-ship. Right now, we're focused on making the release of the game the greatest it can be. So... A little bit of money, no, no app, uh, but uh, we need a game. We need a game before we need an app. Good, solid game. Absolutely. Um, but it sounds like, it's interesting, it sounds like we're going to see some cool web-based development stuff as well, which uh, I, it sounds to me like it's much more than just like, hey, here's a fan kit, go make a website. It sounds like there might be something a little bit more robust. Um, anybody have any uh, ideas or speculation what they might be doing here? Yeah, you're going to be able to... Um play with dies that you haven't got yet and at the end when you've decided the one you want he says no go to the gem store and buy the dies that you haven't got right now just over here and uh stuff like that don't anyone Sorry. quote him on that <laughs> <laughs> that was sarcasm that was total yes. sarcasm <laughs> God, it's me. I'm speaking. They should know it's but, but you now. would think. But I got to say, like, reading that, right, the first thing I think of is that some sort of API, right? Like, there's going to be some sort of API that taps into the game itself, which which players, you know, maybe armchair devs out there who want to, like, you know, code something up in a weekend to start pulling data out and do just some cool stuff with character stuff and stats and all that kind of thing. Is that what you guys are thinking they may do with this web development stuff? 
Yeah, I, I would I would imagine, you know, we know that they're trying to put in hooks for like the, the real money auction house and uh, not the real money auction house. That's the, other <laughs> <laughs> the real money Sorry, auction house to me. The, hey, the, you know, the somebody, marketplace. Somebody wow. just made ten thousand dollars on the real money auction house. This I know. Year. Yeah. Uh, Probably why it's on my brain. This just like, in. I, Richie Procopio. I have heard, heard of that. that. <laughs> Guild Wars Two with the real money auction house. You can make ten grand as well. <laughs> Scott's oh, brushing up boy. on his economics right now. He's like, "What? I'm, I'm trading on the OTC right yeah. now." I got a legendary. I'm rich. <laughs> it's a crazy story, actually. If you don't know what we're talking about, because it was kind of cryptic, uh, a Diablo three player in the Real Money Auction House this week uh, did a did a Reddit AMAA, and he made ten ten grand since uh, since Diablo three launched. Sorry, Richie. Derailed. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, we know that they're putting hooks into like the marketplace so that uh, people can have some sort of functionality like that outside the game. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's interesting. You, you, the community really, you know, if they if they if they allow people access to the back end, who knows, all kinds of sites come out of kind of come out of doing this kind of thing. They they can have rankings and leaderboards and and, and different types of things that that'll spring up for doing it. So it's going to be interesting to see what they actually give out and what players actually do with it. Do you guys think they'll go farther than uh, most of the other companies out there as far as, like, giving access to some of this data? I really thought I remembered them saying that they weren't going to put out the API and they were not going to give so much access to that. Hmm. I could be totally dreaming that up, but I thought that was a thing they had said. Maybe uh, that, I was extrapolating from the mods. I okay, no, if, that, if that's a possibility, which you could absolutely be right, I mean, what do you think that this web stuff could possibly be then? It's a little cryptic. It's a little cryptic. It is. That's why it is I went. That's why I went straight to API because I'm like, what else could it be? I mean, it sounds a little bit more robust than a than a, than a fan site kit with some some images and some logos and stuff. So who knows? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah. Anything you guys like particularly would like to see that that to to give it to the players to allow them to create certain things in the game that, that aren't in it at its core. Well, from a web app perspective we're talking about like the with the, the the application like the mobile app or something like that i i'd like that i mean i'd like to eventually be able to be in like some sort of spectator mode that, that could actually be viewed on a mobile device or something like that well, that would be awesome or or like they, they actually have said that there's ability to look at different maps and stuff like that through the through the web app mm -hmm. and you can actually, actually ping, you can ping on the map and actually have people in your guild or whatever actually see your ping so you can help them point out things and i was thinking about what if what if you could actually kind of lead World versus World Squad by looking at maps and pinging points and actually give you because know, we know that they're they're going to try to integrate chat so you can so you can communicate with your friends in there so it'd be kind of interesting that you you can't play the game at the moment but maybe you can actually you know, help coordinate some World versus World attacks I think that would be pretty interesting yeah I think the other uh, the other uh, that, that's a great one I mean that that would be super addictive I think if they did it right and you could just be sitting around on your mobile phone and like ping like things that are going on in WW or something for your guild to be insane. Um, what about auction house? That's an obvious one, right? Auction house right. stuff, crafting yeah. maybe, and trait respects, and doing the the queues on your guild builds. Mm -hmm. could, oh, that would be amazing! Yeah. Yeah, if you could, if you were able to go in and start the next queue on what you're building, like you know, I can I want to start my guild bank now, and I can do that on my app. That's that stuff would be great. That'd be super convenient. Yeah. And I guess we've got an authenticator, which is now interesting. They're not gonna have a web app, so I wonder what they're gonna do with the authenticator system on launch. Uh, if you didn't buy a box and you're getting a digital edition, it sounds like there's not going to be any uh, that, that safeguard uh, security system in place. Um, mm -hmm. What about moving your characters around in game? It kind of makes sense with the waypoint system, right? Maybe. Yeah, you know, I was I was originally thinking, you know, because I think I I think I, I read that at some point that they were putting that in, and, and from like a, a other MMO standpoint, it's something that you would. It, it sounds kind of cool. It's like, hey, I'm on my way home from work. I don't want my character to be here. I want them to be here. But with the waypoint system in Guild Wars Two, I don't know if that's really necessary because it takes you all of like three seconds to do once you log in the game. So I, I I can see that being something maybe interesting in other games, but I, I'm not sure that that actually gives you much benefit in Guild Wars Two because you can kind of just teleport anywhere you want. So, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get some viewer questions. Uh, this one first up from Gustavo Rocco. Gustavo says, uh, do you know if the game will go with the same launcher from the beta events or will we have to download another? Do we have an official word on this? Yep, yeah. yes we do. 
it's the same client, um, there will obviously be updates to download. Um, but yeah, you're using the same client for the betas and the stress test as you are for launch. All right, perfect. There you go. Clean, cut, and simple. Makes everybody happy. Uh, next up, this one from Alex Ansel. Alex says, I know a lot of people have been complaining about missing professions from the first Guild Wars. Do you think any of them, uh, Dervish in particular, will come back? What do you think, Richie? Yeah, you know, a Dervish is uh, from the continent of Alona. They're, they were very uh, big in that. Uh, so I think for sure if they do an expansion and, uh, you know, Alona is the, 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 the place we're going to be hanging out, that they could come back with the Dervish. Um, I think, uh, you know, there are a lot of those professions that didn't make it through that actually have been pieced apart a little bit and and and, and put into some of the classes for Guild Wars 2. Uh, but I think Dervish, you know, is could, still has a has a kit a theme that that could fit you know post launch uh po once they do some expansions any of you guys have any um, insight as to why they would have overlooked some of them or any specific reasons why they pulled it out they said um that they were you know looking at archetypes and what archetypes overlap of the professions we have and we don't want those included if you look at the profession list of the core campaign um only the monk didn't make it back in so everyone else from the original guild wars prophecies is back in as a profession and the only profession from an expansion that made it in was the assassin kind of refit and made more general as a thief so i think that richie was right in saying that the professions that we've seen that didn't make it back in are kind of tied to the continent. So if we expand to Alona, we might see the Dervish and Paragon again um, or something similar to them. Um, another thing that's problematic specifically with the Dervish is that um, a lot of that class was built around the human gods. Like the kind of core element of the Dervish was their prayers and mysticism and, you know, taking on an avatar of the god forms, which um, when you now have five professions, only one of which believes in the human gods, or I'm sorry, five races, only one of which believes in the human gods, it's a little more difficult to have that. So they would have to rework kind of that core concept of the class. So you might see something very similar to a Dervish that wasn't actually the Dervish as we know it. Yeah. Yeah. And the Dervish really likes the scythe. And they would they would add the scythe weapon, so I could see them doing. That. <laughs> I don't want to be talking while that's on the screen. Actually, I don't care. Yeah, so <laughs> so they can actually if they add, I could see them adding a scythe weapon at some point. We know that they've thought about putting new weapons in the game. Probably not going to be something they do until like expansions because it does change some of the very core elements of your abilities and stuff like that. But I could definitely see them making a dervish type character with a side. But like Elizabeth said, mm -hmm. they'd have to change some of the the background to it a little bit. So um, keep your eyes peeled. And yeah, definitely when they release Cantha and Alona type expansions, we should see some new professions that go along with it. All right, this next one up from Joshua Lasher. This is a simple question, but uh, hopefully somebody knows the exact answer to this. Are names unique across all servers? This is going to take some while. Um... <laughs> well, I mean, this question came up multiple times, and actually our producer was even kind of confused by it as well to some extent, and he was like, I'm putting okay. this question in. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> Just to expand upon what Scott said, yes. I think they're missing the fact that it's actually yes. Oh. Yeah, like, yes. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's yes? It's yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Uh, names are going to be unique across all the servers. I mean, you have the guesting mechanic where you can actually visit people on other servers. But but you can also, when you get put into those overflow servers, that's not server-specific overflow. That mm -hmm. That's that's general overflow. So I think to uh, get get over any kind of barrier of, of people <laughs> coming across themselves and freaking out because they have yeah. the same name. <laughs> across the just, time streams. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they made it unique cross-server. All right, next question. This went up from Ryan uh, Cossey. Ryan is cute with his little bunny ears. Uh, mm -hmm. Ryan asks, uh, he says, listening to the blog Arena Net did about how awesome Ore is going to be led me to believe that the encounter with Zaitan was going to be a large open world one. Up until they said the words, Final Dungeon. He puts that in quotes, if that's a quote. Uh, so is this confirming that the encounter with Zaitan is going to be a five-man group ordeal? Well, I mean, a, a dungeon, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to walk into a dungeon and you're, you're fighting in a closet. 
you know, I mean, a, a dungeon can be massive or in great scope or grandeur or whatever. So, I mean, I mean, I guess it could be both, couldn't it? Couldn't couldn't it actually? Yeah. Couldn't it actually maybe like you know start in an open world event, you chase them into a dungeon and finish them off or something? Good. Yeah, I feel like it'd be very peculiar if he was like hiding in this one little den that you had to go in to slay him. So, like, I feel like you'll be interacting with him outside of that. I mean, he's not that but big. He's like he's like a little bat. You just fly in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very interesting to see how they pull this off. Uh, but yeah, they, I, I mean, I've seen several interviews where they kind of confirm that Zaitan is actually in a dungeon. And uh, we've seen, uh, they've actually alluded to that after you defeat him, the story changes for you, which would make it feel like a person, you know, a, 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 a story mode dungeon. The first time you actually go through the dungeon, you defeat Zaitan. And then, you know, when you go through that dungeon on Or again, it might be something a little bit different. But it will be interesting how they pull off a five player group. You know, interacting with you know and defeating this this boss. It's going to be that would be a little odd. So I hope they they've got some clever way of uh, of working that in somehow, so it doesn't feel weird. Sky, you're planning you're, pl you're planning on putting this on farm with your guild, right? You're you're gonna this is raid night. Yeah, for, yeah you're gonna put this on farm. Yeah. Well, if if it's like the five of you on Zaitan, you, you're all you there hacking away at its toenail um, as it looms up and fills the sky um yeah and it's i, I want to get in there and see what it looks like so we we so used to this idea you say dungeon and it's this small intimate experience that can be very limited in scope whereas it depends on what the dungeon is if you could walk in there and it's massive maybe you ride on his back just, maybe you just on. ride on zaitan zaitan's back and he flies, oh, no. he flies like around that would hurt because yeah, and and also I'm sorry, I just got a flashback to Dragon Soul. Really? Please oh, don't do that. I, had no idea, I had no idea what you're talking about. Sorry, I didn't. Somebody's done that before. Um, oh. As far as the five man thing goes, and like being worried about it being limited in scope, by this time since Zaitan um, is kind of the culmination of all the storylines, you will probably have made a lot of friends with the Vigil, and hopefully, like I'm assuming that you got the iconic band back together. Like I'm assuming Destiny's Edge doesn't all just like go off and face into a corner and say they're not going to help you. So it's you know if it is in the dungeon, this final confrontation, it'll be you and you know four of your best friends in your group, plus Destiny's Edge, plus probably the uh, uh, cross racial orders. So it. I feel like it would be kind of ridiculous, given what we've seen um, from Destiny's Edge encounters previously, um, that you know having five people just go and take down Zai Ten would be kind of peculiar. All right, next up, this one from Jonathan Kenny. Jonathan asks, he says, "What will the small guilds and small groups be doing in Dub v Dubs since these huge alliances will be doing most of the heavy lifting?" What do you think, there, Richie? Well, I, you know, we've talked about this a little bit before that guilds can take ownership of a keep or a tower in World versus World. So even if even if you're a smaller guild, you can have your 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 one your your one bastion where you get to control and you get to specify which buffs you're going to give to people around that area. So you know these smaller guilds can protect and defend that city. Like in the World versus World, we've been seeing in the betas, there hasn't been a lot of defending. There's been a lot of conquering and moving on, but I think defense is going to play a much a role after launch and there's also a lot of dynamic events um, for smaller groups smaller groups can take out towers smaller groups can you know interact with the npcs ogres and help the ogre and cam and get them on your side interrupt you know caravans. Don't forget about supplies and caravans supplies and stuff. yeah so there's a lot to lot to do whether you're in a small guild or a large guild for Any, sure anything else we missed guys anything anything do we miss anything there's tons of stuff to do background and yeah <laughs> cheer people on yeah, come on, big guilds. We're gonna stop Well, I, that's the thing with W Dubs. Is there really a reason that like smaller guilds can't just join in? I mean, I was yeah, going like I, mean, I, I just yeah, I absolutely. just I just found where the big fight was, and I was playing like one or, with one or two people, and I was having a blast. Like, why does you you don't? It's not like it's like a you're not invited. You're not in the big boys guild. No. All right. So yes, you just, can't come over here. This is where we're playing. You have to go and play in that sandpit over there. I guess I'm assuming he's thinking maybe maybe because that they they wouldn't be uh, competitive enough in WWs to make a difference. But I didn't find that at all. Like I found even at a low level, I was able to like still make a difference. 
I guess another fear would be that if um, big guilds are like claiming all the keeps, other people might not want to help in the claiming process or help defend them. But I really feel like most guilds that are really invested in world versus world aren't going to care so much about, like obviously you want your name on it because that's shiny, um, but will be in it for the experience. Yeah, and I think somebody, I just watched in chat room and I think somebody really pointed out something really well. I think if you're planning on going in a smaller guild, I think it'd be great to get on the forums and join join an alliance with a much larger guild and do like mm -hmm. what Richie was talking about, where you know you're sort of the uh, the defense because that that's what was happening a lot in WW Dubs is like Zerg would just you know take over a fortress and then everybody would move on to the next one. Well, you could be the ones that kind of take and hold it with like you know five six people and just that's your job. That'd be great. So I think yep. uh, I think they're actually gonna be able to do a lot of support and and kind of be the backbone, so to speak, of uh, of the larger guilds and stuff like that. So. Yeah. All right, this one again from Michelle Black. Michelle, uh, oh, that's Jonathan. Kenny again. Uh, Jonathan really wants to know the answer to that question. <laughs> I know. Really? No. Michelle Black. Oh, look at the little cute frog. Oh. All right. Michelle asks, uh, she says, as the game grows older and the story moves on, do you think ArenaNet will use the dynamic event system to push new story and new enemies into the lower level zones? as opposed to focusing entirely on new max level zones like other MMOs? Good question. That's a really good question. Cause I have to say with recent MMOs that have been released, uh, I thought it was awesome how the secret world released new content that soon after and stuck it in like the first zone that you, that you started off in the game and you had to go back. I think that's a great idea. I hope they do this. Any insight? But, well, well, especially well. with the way that the, the, the game's built is that you can go into all of those different areas, no matter what level, and be able to do things, and it will be beneficial to you. It's not like other games where I'm level 80, I'm not going to go to that level 10 zone anymore because it's a complete waste of time. So y you can actually attract people to go back to those zones with fresh content, and it's still stuff they can engage in, and it, it can be challenging to them. It's not a face roll just because you're of a higher level. So bring in that sort of content not only would work, it makes absolute sense to make sure that you're, you're moving people around the world, that you're, you're making sure that each area is vibrant, and I think, I no think, matter I how think, far into development you are. I think the win here could be, and tell me what you guys think, is that like, they can't just be like these little, like kind of like, oh, there's a little piece of new content over here. And you're like, oh, that'd be great if I went back to that old area that I did like two months ago. They need to do like catastrophic big events to where it feels like this is a world and bleep happens and things go down and like, oh my God, I have to go back there. And it's not like this thing that you just move through and then you're like, you're beyond it. And I think if, if, if they only sprinkle dynamic events or they're kind of not that not that big of a deal, but something changed, he's like, oh, Scott, maybe be like, hey, Garrett, did you hear about this thing? And you know, it changed over there. And you're like, oh, okay, that sounds great, but I'm just gonna keep moving forward if you're still doing content. But if it's like some massive event that's like, no, man, we have to get there. Like stuff's going down and like the world's going to explode over in this area if we don't get there. That could be super cool because that would make the world feel just so much more richer and just like a full world. Elizabeth, go because I know you can't wait to tell <laughs> me sorry, that um, everything that I'm, I'm spewing is happening. Not quite. So they haven't promised that the world will explode if you don't go to a zone. But um, I believe it was called and Johansson very expressly said, yes, we are going to be going in and changing mobs and like changing what's in zones and adding new dynamic events and taking some out and this and that and the other thing. So they will be updating the content of zones on a fairly regular basis um, to the point where they never said that like a zone will be entirely changed after a certain period of time, but there will be new things and um, changed. Not entirely changed, but I do hope it's a little more than just like, uh, yeah, you know, mo like NPC, uh, not but, but just like mob switch out or something. Like, I hope it's not I just totally like, agree oh, that it'd be cool. You know, it's got, so, I, if it's a bit bigger than that, I think people would really take notice of it and really make an effort to go back there and do it. As if, say, they said, oh, look, the, say the Shatterer appeared in one area, or if they changed the entire place into an allegory for the Hunger Games, or, oh, they've already done that. Hang so on. They're already, they're basically, they're already showing that the, they, they can do it. That's there. They can do area wide events that change pretty much everything in it and the events that you take part in there. So you would think that that's why. That, that's what's hopefully coming down the pipe.
Does that count as our Netflix ad now? <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> this episode of Guildcast is brought to you by Zam.com. Go over to Zam.com. I am almost sure they are working on a Guild Wars 2 database, I would think, knowing that crew of people. That's sort that of crew, yes. what they do. Uh, I yes, of that crew. but uh, for now, go over to Zam.com, go over to Torhead.com, go over to uh, Wowhead.com, go over to all the Zam network. Uh, Mr. Scott Hawks, follow him on Twitter at Jaramore. And, and at Zam.com. All right, I didn't know if you wanted to, uh, you didn't know if you wanted me to announce that. Yeah, it's, it's official. I told you the other day. All right. Glad you did. Scott, ex editor in chief of Game Breaker, new editor in chief of Zam.com. They just keep stealing our people because they're that good. <laughs> Congratulations on your position, buddy. All right, go over to Zam.com and. All right, so Richie Procopio, follow him on Twitter at Richie Procopio. Go over to Bog Otter, check out his YouTube channel, his occasional writing here on the Game Breaker TV. Saw some Guild Wars 2 uh, video you're putting out the other day. Yep. Lots of stuff. Absolutely. Blue blue uh, elephants. You didn't call him Dumbo that time. I didn't call him Dumbo. Uh, Elizabeth Claire, follow her on the Twitter at Elizabeth Claire, and of course go over to Massively.com and what do you have something? What, you have something? You have something? What? What? Uh, what? Something you I'm have really an announcement too? About. Are you editor in chief of uh, something new as well? <laughs> no. Um, Forbes magazine. So I noticed a lot of people were really excited about the lore that we talked about. Um, I actually did a brief um, rundown of lore over on Massively on Tuesday. Another at, um, bit of it is coming out tomorrow, and it should run from like where we left off in the last article up to present day in Guild Wars 2, so if you want to know more of that lore, check it out. <laughs> That's really scary. Love that guy. Alright, follow me on Twitter at Gary Gannon, and you can follow GameBreaker TV at GameBreaker TV, of course. Uh, new website is being worked on. I know you guys are blasting us for our schedules being all screwed up on the website for when we do the show live. I apologize. We'll get it sorted. We've got a new website coming. Uh, Guildcast is Wednesdays at 6. Buildcast, our Guild Wars 2 PvP and Theory Crafting show, is live at Wednesdays at 8. Come over for both. If you guys have not checked out Guildcast yet, check our Buildcast yet. Obviously, you've checked out Guildcast. You're watching it, but I'm just getting them confused. Watch Buildcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's smart. Watch, Unlike watch me. Have a good week. Don't get too stressed out tomorrow.